For the first sub-lesson of the TCPIP lesson, I want to talk about IP version 4. This is a very, very commonly used protocol for IP networks. In fact, almost all IP networks utilize it. It makes use of 32-bit dotted decimal addresses. And we gave an example in the past, in previous lessons, uh, one example would be 192.168.1. Dot one. This is 32-bit because if you convert each of these numbers from decimal to binary, you'll get 32 bits in total. 8 bits, 8 bits, 8 bits, and 8 bits. So in total, it's a 32-bit number. And any of these numbers can be anything. However, uh, most, most of the time, you're going to have a network on 10 or on 192.168 or on 172.16 or 172.17 and so on. Those are going to be the most common. And I'll explain why a little bit later in another sub-lesson. But IP version 4, very common for uh, all the networks out there, really, that use TCP IP. And every computer gets an IP address, an IP version 4 address. And it's these individual addresses that make the distinction between the computers and allow them to communicate with each other. Uh, on the computer, we're going to show some IP addresses in Windows in the IP properties sheet and then also show it in the command line with the IP config command. Okay, so we talked about IP version 4. Now I want to show actual examples of IP version 4 configurations within Windows. And we'll do this within the GUI, within the graphical portion of Windows, in the IP properties sheet. And also in the command line, we'll do that in the command prompt in Windows. And we'll use the IP config command to do that. So let's start with the GUI portion of Windows. Once again, we're going to go to the control panel and network and sharing. From there, we're going to go to the change adapter settings link. And then in network connections, you'll see we have multiple connections here. We've seen this uh, Wi-Fi connection in previous sub-lessons, but this time we're going to go with the Ethernet connection. And the name Ethernet is the default name that Windows 8 gives to a wired connection. And that's what I want to look at. I actually have connections out to two networks. I have the Wi-Fi connection, which is going out to the wireless, obviously but a separate network with a Soho router with the Ethernet connection. So to view the details of the IP properties, we're going to right-click that and go to Properties. That brings up the Ethernet Properties dialog box. We'll scroll down and go to Internet Protocol version 4, and then go to Properties over here. And that brings up the IP Properties sheet. And here we see that we have static information. We have information that was manually entered by me. And so it says, use the following IP address. This is in contrast to obtaining an IP address automatically from a DHCP server, which is what a client computer normally does because it's easy. It automates the process. But as a tech, you might have the need to have a static IP on your system. You know, for example, my wireless connection over here, that obtains an IP address automatically. But this connection is different. I use it for a lot of testing and for demonstrating things like static IP addresses. Keep in mind also you might use static IP addresses for servers and routers and uh, maybe even printers and some other devices where you don't want the IP address to change. When you obtain an IP address automatically, you get a lease from a DHCP server, and that can change over time. The lease may be for seven days, maybe for 30 days. But if you set it to static and select use the following IP address, this information remains. It's permanent. So what do we have? We have the IP address, and that is 10.254.254.204. That is the number of this computer. It identifies this computer on the network. We also have the subnet mask, triple 255.0. The 255s tell us the network portion of the IP address. They correspond to that. So the network portion of the IP is 10.254.254. The zero in the subnet mask corresponds to the host portion or the individual computer portion 
of the IP address, and that's 204. We also see the default gateway, and that is the device that allows all the computers on the local area network access out to the internet. And this address is almost always on the same IP network as your client computer. And in this case, it's 10.254.254.1. We also have the DNS server information. It's the same device. It's the same device as the gateway. It's a basic four-port Soho router, all-in-one multifunction network device. So you get all this nice information here, and you can modify it if you need to manually. Or if you need to, you could obtain an IP address automatically from a DHCP server, which would blank that info out. And in fact, you can obtain DNS server information automatically as well. We don't want that. I want the static information, so I'll cancel out of this window. And if we go back to the IP4 properties, you'll see it has returned. If you ever make changes here, by the way, you should click on Validate Settings upon exit, and that'll do a quick test. And if it doesn't work, it'll bring the window back up. Now, that's the GUI portion. Let's move on to the command prompt portion. We'll open up the command prompt now. And I have that here in my taskbar. But another quick way to open that is to uh, go to the keyboard and use a shortcut key. And I love using this. The uh, Windows and R key will bring up the run prompt. And from there, you can run anything in Windows. And it's great to use the run prompt because you, know, you have lots of different versions of Windows out there. And the navigation to different applications and settings within Windows can be different from one version of Windows to the next. But the run prompt is the same across the board. You press the Windows key and R, and it brings up run. And then you can run whatever commands you want or applications. In this case, the command prompt, which we want, and that's cmd.exe, or you could just type cmd. You'll press Enter, and that brings up our command prompt. From here, we're going to type the ipconfig command, which will show us essentially the same information that we saw in the IP properties sheet. So we'll do that now, ipconfig, and press Enter. And we can see our different network connections. Here's our wireless connection, the IP address, which was obtained automatically, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. And then our wired connection, which is, again, by default called Ethernet in Windows 8. And that is our IP address, which we saw, subnet mask, and default gateway. Now, we don't see the DNS server. If you want to see additional information about your IP configuration, then you want to do an IP config space slash all. And we'll do that now. I'll just clear the screen. And it's going to be IP config space slash all. And press Enter. And we get a ton more information here. For example, if we go up to the wireless connection, that's this over here, we see the DHCP info. We see the DHCP server we're connecting to, the DNS servers. And the same holds true for the wired connection down here. We see a lot more information. Uh, starting with a description of the card and the physical address. This is also known as the MAC address. This is a hexadecimal six octet number, which is individual to each network adapter out there. Each one is unique. You'll notice here it says DHCP enabled. No, because we have a static IP address. We configured this IP address ourselves or manually. And here's that IP address, subnet mask, gateway but also the additional info, we have the DNS servers, or server in this case. So if you want to see more information about your uh, network connection, run an IP config slash all. And really, that's the best way to go. If you're troubleshooting a system, that's one of the first things you want to do, IP config slash all, so you can find out what's happening. What is the TCP IP configuration here? Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to, show an actual connection from one system to another. And to show a basic connection from one IP address to another, we're going to use the ping commands. And the ping command allows you to check connectivity to another host on the network, a host being any computer or device with an IP address. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that through the wireless connection and connect to the default gateway, 10.102.80.1. So we'll clear this out. 
And we'll run that ping now. It's just ping, that's the ping command space, and the IP address we want to connect to, which is 10.102.80.1. Press enter, and we get replies. Replies are good. That's what we want. That means that that device is live. This computer can see that device. It can see the gateway. We're getting replies. So we know that our network connection is working properly. And you can ping just about anything. You can ping other computers, anything with an IP address, the gateway, routers, uh, websites on the internet, you name it. And uh, that gets more into the 220-902 exam, but uh, it's a fun little command to play around with, a great testing tool and a great troubleshooting tool. And by the way, when you're working in the command prompt, simple commands like ipconfig and ping can be run with no problem. But when you get into more advanced commands, you'll need to run the command prompt in elevated mode as an administrator. And to do that, we would have our command prompt, either an icon or a link somewhere, and we'd right click that guy and then right click the command prompt and then select run as administrator. And when we do that, user account control comes up, we'll say yes. And then you'll see basically the same window, but with a different path, drops you in system 32 by default. And up here it'll say administrator. We're running this as an administrator, and you have to have administrative rights on the computer to do this, by the way. But now you can run any command out there. So a little tip for you on the elevated mode of the command prompt. This one here is the regular mode. It just shows the path that the command prompt runs from. So what I'd like you to do is go on your computers and try this as well. Check out the IP configuration of your network adapter or adapters and do this in the GUI. Do it in the graphical portion within the IP properties sheet and also do it within the command prompt with the IP config and the IP config slash all commands. And if you have some time, do a little test with the ping command as well. And go and ping your gateway address or other computers or servers if you wish. And that wraps up this sub-lesson on IP version 4.